Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome into Trainer Talk Tuesday, and today we are going to talk about the top five ways to eliminate belly blow. So I know that's a big one for a lot of folks where I was talking about how we can slim down our midsection and how we can try to keep that weight off at the same time. So we want to give you some tidbits about that today, and let's go ahead and jump right in. As Nate just mentioned, everybody wants a flat tummy and they want to get it fast. And although there's no quick fix when it comes to sustainable fat loss, losing that belly blow can go a long way. And that is something that you can do relatively quickly. So we're going to dive right in, guys. The very first thing is, number one, you need to drink more water. And... This may not sound like a whole lot, but surprisingly enough, the majority of Americans are actually clinically dehydrated. So I want you to think about yourself when we talk about this topic. And as you're watching this, go ahead and let us know in the comments how many ounces of water you have gotten in already for the day. And then I also want you to think about how much you weigh. And then divide that number by two. Divide your weight by two. And if you are not getting close to getting that amount in by the end of the day, then you are far off track. You need at least half your body weight in ounces to be hydrated. At least, guys, this is the bare minimum. So when we start factoring in current hydration levels, the heat, we're in Florida, so you guys know that that humidity, that heat is coming, and you're going to have to drink more water. When you factor in your activity level, these things all matter, and that's why, generally speaking, most professionals are going to recommend that you drink about a gallon of water a day, and that is true. But if you're not getting anywhere near that amount, guys, start with half your body weight, um, or I would say a good number to aim for, regardless of your body weight, if you're not doing it already, is about 80 ounces. Right. And again, when she says half your body weight, we're talking ounces, folks. So if you weigh 100 pounds right now, then you, should, then you would want to be getting about 50 ounces of water in, ideally. And if you can afford to go above so, you can push yourself because all of us can be working from a deficit, seeing that we might may have not been getting enough water in the prior years, then you can always afford to have a little bit more over a nice time span. So guys, we're talking ounces here when we say half your body weight. Yep, guys, and you may think, well, wouldn't that make me have more bloat if I'm drinking so much more water than what I'm used to? And initially at the beginning, yes, it could. You may retain water depending on your diet, but once your body realizes that, okay, you're gonna actually give me the amount that I need, it will release it, and you will be making frequent trips to the bathroom. So if you're peeing often throughout the day, and if your urine is a very pale yellow, then you know that you are hydrated. That's where we should be. So yes, guys, you may retain them at the beginning, but long-term water is the absolute best thing that you could put into your body. And so giving it what it needs is only gonna benefit you in the long run, and it's gonna reduce that belly. Uh, yeah, and another thing I want to add is that a lot of the foods that a lot of people eat have high sodium levels into it, meaning there's a ton of salt, and salt is going to force your body to retain more water. So if you're not drinking enough, then that's a way for you to have a real, real quick blow. But drinking more water in advance and throughout that meal will help you flush that sodium levels out so that your body isn't retaining as much, and you can slim down or keep that slim look for a longer period of time. Up, guys, and number two, that's going to take us right into addressing your digestion. And drinking enough water is a huge part of this. Um, the average person has at least six to seven pounds of fecal matter in their intestine of just like undigested waste just sitting there. And I know that sounds pretty disgusting, guys, but most of you are walking around with that, if not significantly larger amounts. So, normal digestion, let me say this, not normal, healthy digestion, because I think that in America that we have normalized things that are not healthy. So, healthy digestion levels means that you should be eliminating waste one to three times a day. A day, guys. So, this should be after every major meal. You should be using the restroom. And it should um, be of a soft, snake-like 
like consistency. If it's not, then there is an issue with your digestion. If you are not going every single day, there is an issue with your digestion. And you can imagine that having undigested waste in your intestine is going to make them bulge out. It's going to cause inflammation. So yes, there's going to be a bloated look and appearance there. So guys, obviously, like you just said, drinking more water can help with this, but also adding things like kombucha, which is a fermented tea, or other pre and probiotics can go a long way to helping um, balance the overall gut flora in your intestines there. So that's just one of the, the many things that you can do, and I suggest everybody do that, and pay attention to how your digestion changes over time and do you have anything to add on that well one thing i was going to say is that a lot of one thing that you can do and they practice this in other countries is try to have a warm beverage with your meals like hot tea or doesn't sound very appealing to me but even drinking your water at a warmer temperature helps you aid with that digestion well, I, I, I like room temperature water well when i say warm water i literally mean <laughs> warm water like yeah. to the point where you're almost bringing it to a boil some people in different countries they do drink it that way and studies have found that these people do have much more of a healthier digestive system seeing that they are having more common bowel movements throughout the day when they're consuming food whereas a lot of folks here in our country here it's no secret most of us go to the restroom when we're talking about what we're speaking of about one time a day Meanwhile, you're eating about five to six times a day, so obviously that's not adding up, and that help, and that lets you know that your digestive no, system yeah, would, isn't in the health. I would say that most Americans, and you can you know ask yourself this: most Americans are going only a couple times a week. Let's be honest here: you're not. Most people aren't going every day. You're going once every two to three days. <laughs> hence, and, hence the joke that I know you all heard when most when someone goes to the bathroom, they come out and they say. I feel like I just lost X amount of pounds. In some did. cases, you probably did. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, um, we're gonna we're gonna get on into number three here, which goes along with what we've already talked about. Um, this is a huge, one of the biggest ways that you can help address your digestion is to remove the inflammatory foods and other food intolerances. So, your nutrition is going to play a huge role in your success. It's going to help not only eliminate belly bloat, but also belly fat. And when we're talking about belly bloat in general, there are certain foods that cause inflammation in the body. Now, everybody's body will react to this, um, these types of foods in, in an inflammatory response. Some may be more severe than others, but everybody will have a response to it, whether you notice it or not. So those five in inflammatory foods are dairy, gluten, refined sugar, caffeine, and alcohol. Those are the five inflammatory foods. So if you are consuming one to two or all of these things, then you are going to have inflammation in the body. Now, the best way to go about this is an elimination diet, which means we're going to remove all those food items from your daily eating for an extended period of time. So I would say at least two weeks here, that those items need to be removed. And then you can add one thing back in a t at a time. So for instance, you can add in just caffeine or just dairy or whatever you choose to do and then wait three to five days and see how your body responds. Um, if you have a sensitivity and intolerance or an allergy, you're gonna respond um, differently to these things as far as the level of intensity, but pay attention to your digestion and how that's affected. Do you go more? Do you go less? Pay attention to your skin. Do you have breakouts, rashes? Pay attention to your sleep schedule. Are you getting good quality sleep? Is it affected at all when you start reintroducing some of these things back into your diet? Do you get bloated? right away and we know that once we can remove that bloat and then it's there again it's going to be a lot more noticeable do you have pain after eating these types of foods double over in pain because of the bloat these are all things that you want to pay attention to there are other even though these are some of the most common foods that you can have allergies intolerances or sensitivities to there are other foods that 
may cause issues with people and so those are worth exploring and it's even worth potentially going to a doctor and getting tested for certain allergies. Right, and like we said, all of these things tie in together. So if you're not quite ready for an elimination diet, you don't feel like mentally you're there, you enjoy some of the things you're doing, then that water intake, like we mentioned, is gonna be severely important because it's gonna be able to limit a, a, a portion of that, that inflammation from those, infl those inflammatory foods. And if you're having a night when you're going out with the girls or the guys or you're getting together with your friends and you know that you're going to be consuming some alcohol that evening. It's very critical for you to make sure you consume the necessary amount of water prior to that point so that your body isn't retaining as much and having such a negative effect from you consuming that the, the alcoholic beverages. So just wanted to toss that in there. Everything else is very well said. That moves us on to number four here. And obviously you knew this was coming, but exercising more, guys. Burning more calories, getting more active, keeping your body in an active state so that you consistently always burning calories. So that way you're trying to put out, you're burning more than you're putting in. So that's always going to be uh, um, a portion of it. It's just trying to make sure you stay on a consistent exercise regimen, burning the necessary amount of calories that you are putting into the system. Yep, guys, and also exercise in general, when you get your body moving, it helps with that digestion that we just talked about. It's going to keep things moving and flowing. Um, it's just the way that our bodies were designed to work. We were designed and created to move. So when we're sitting down for long periods of time, so is that waste and everything in our body. But once you get up and get moving, it's going to help things flow a lot easier. So they all work hand in hand here, guys. And that's going to get us into number five which is practice intentional fasting. And I use the word intentional for a reason here because oftentimes people fast without planning to. And it's very sporadic. There's no purpose behind it. They're just like, oh my gosh, I forgot to eat. And then they eat whatever type of food when they realize that they've gone the whole day without consuming any calories. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about planned intentional fasting where there's a purpose behind it where there's a set time frame that you are doing it, where you're getting enough water during that time frame. Um, this could be done through intermittent fasting. Um, that's a very popular method here where um, you are having a period of time of fasting and then a period of time of eating. And you can do that in different time intervals. Or if you're ready, both mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, you could do long-term fasting, which we're going to consider that as 24 hours or longer. And we're not recommending that you do this if you have never done it before and you're not ready to do it. Uh, always consult with your doctor prior and make sure that this is something that you train your body for, okay? I don't want you going out and doing a three-day fast when you've never gone, you know, 16 hours without eating any food. So. Keep that in mind, guys. It's intentional. It's not sporadic. There's a purpose behind it. There's a plan behind it. And how you start your fast and how you break your fast matters as far as the type of foods you are consuming before and afterwards, the amount of calories you get within your certain eating window, and then the amount of water that you are drinking during that time, guys. So that's what I mean by intentional. It is something that makes a huge difference. Right, and that's exactly what I was gonna say there is emphasize that word intentional and just know that we're talking about doing things with a purpose, just as you heard laid out there. So even when you're fasting, you're you're not eating up to a certain time consistently every day, you know it. This time of day is when I'm gonna consume my first amount of calories. And for most people, that's gonna be a large bulk of what you're gonna eat for the day, especially based off what you did prior to that point. If you exercise that morning, if you've been very active that morning, you're gonna be more sedentary going the rest of the day. Normally, you're gonna consume most of your calories at that, at that time. But again, we're talking about purpose and intent here. So that first meal, like Larissa mentioned, does, does it and should it, be just any old thing. This is where you guys get into some prepping, you're planning, you're doing things. Quality. You, yep, quality, so you can get a good quality meal at that time. So you're staying away from the inflammatory foods that we already brought up. You're really limiting 
your chances of glow here when you're doing these things consistently and purposeful and then you're putting in good quality products behind it to make sure that your body gets the proper reaction. Now guys, in fasting, it just, it literally just gives your body a reset. It gives it a break. It allows your major organs to just rest or to catch up from all the damage that's been done so it can heal in the future. Fasting has been proven to be a part of um, regenerating immune cells. So guys, there's a whole bunch of benefits to this. And the main one that we're talking about here is that it's gonna eliminate that bloat. It's going to help press that reset button. So when you do start these other steps that we already discussed, that it's really going to give you the best results by incorporating that fasting with it because now you're, you're you're starting from a fresh start, as much of a fresh start as we can give you, right? And you're just making better decisions from there on out. Yep, and guys, you can look it up for yourselves. I believe studies show that at least one day out of each month, it is ideal for you to go at least 24 hours without any food or any water for that matter, where you're literally letting your body catch up to everything else. So you're letting your organs, you're letting your gut literally digest and break down all of that backed up bacteria and food and flush it out of your system. So again, you may not be ready to jump into that amount of time, but with a slow buildup, trust me, like all things I talk about on this page, you will adapt and be more accustomed to it and you will be able to do it in the future, but it's gonna take some intentional, purposeful um, practices leading up to that point. And I have to before we close out because I know there's gonna be someone that's like, oh, Nate Larson just told me don't drink or uh, eat any food. And yes, intentional. And we're not, we're not advocating that you don't drink water for an extended amount of time. Studies show that a hard, dry fast, which means no food, no water, and no contact with water, so that includes brushing your teeth, taking a shower, um, is the most effective way when it comes to fasting because you can get the same response uh, as far as what the body is doing in a shorter period of time because obviously we need water a lot sooner than we need food. But guys, just keep that in mind. I'm not telling you to like go weeks without water or anything like that. Please don't do that. But there are benefits. Please research it yourself. Please talk to a functional medicine doctor who is um, trained in this specific area. But studies do show that a hard dry fast is just as effective as three days of a water fast. So it's very efficient, guys. It does work, but look further into it and go ahead and let us know in the comments if you have or if you will try out any of these five steps to help eliminate your belly bloat. Right, you guys, you heard what she said. Hard, dry, fast, no brushing your teeth or anything, so you probably want to tell folks to keep their space from you that day <laughs> because they're probably not going to like what they get if they get a little bit too close and you haven't been able to brush your teeth that day. <laughs> Just wanted to throw that joke in All right, guys. We love you so much, and if you're wanting more of a detailed guide to help you eliminate your belly blow, then I will add this into the comments, guys. Make sure to hit up the link of our seven-day free trial to our virtual training club. In that club, you'll have access to different um, fitness and nutritional programs and to name myself once a week. But we do have a cleanse. It's called Electrify Your Life Cleanse that will take you through a lot of these things that we just discussed to really hit that reset and to cleanse your body and give you that fresh start that you're looking for. And I am telling you right now, it is guaranteed to eliminate that belly bloat, but also to uh, reduce the amount of fat that you're carrying on the body. So guys, super cool program. I hope that you check that out. We'll put the link in the description for you to try out your first seven days completely risk-free. And as always, never, never give up. up. Never lose hope. Never, never settle. settle. We love you guys, and we'll see you back here same time, same place next week. Right. And our kids seem like they don't want to take a nap, so it's time to go check in on this madness here. So you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back soon.